Beneath the cold waves of the American coastline, an invisible invasion is taking place. Not by warships, not by weapons, but by a creature barely larger than your hand. It's fast, it's ruthless, and it's spreading faster than anyone can stop it. This is Carcinus manus, the European green crab. And every year, this tiny invader costs the United States over $44 million in damage. From Maine to California, fishermen, scientists, and coastal communities are all facing the same question. How did such a small creature become one of the most destructive forces in our oceans? The European green crab may look harmless, just a small crustacean with a greenish shell and five spines beside each eye. But behind this simple appearance lies one of the most adaptable predators on Earth. Native to the coasts of Europe and North Africa, the species has spread to nearly every continent on the planet. It thrives in both warm and cold waters, in salt water and brackish estuaries, even in polluted harbors where few species can survive. A single female can release up to 185,000 eggs per year. Multiply that across thousands of individuals, and you begin to understand why entire coastlines can be overrun within just a few seasons. They are fast movers, aggressive hunters, and skilled diggers. They feed on clams, mussels, oysters, and even small fish, devouring the foundation of many coastal food chains. And worst of all, in North America, they have almost no natural predators. Green crabs are, quite literally, built to conquer. The story of the green crab's invasion of America begins over two centuries ago. In the early 1800s, Ships crossing the Atlantic carried seawater in their ballast tanks to stabilize their voyages. Hidden in that water were thousands of tiny green crab larvae, invisible passengers on a one-way trip to a new world. The first confirmed sighting was in Massachusetts, 1817. By the 1950s, the species had spread north to Maine. And by the late 1980s, it was found on the west coast. From California to Washington. They even pushed north into British Columbia and, more recently, toward Alaska's warming shores.
As ocean temperatures rise, the crab's range expands. Warmer water allows more eggs to hatch, more larvae to survive, and more generations to reproduce each year. What started as a handful of stowaways has turned into a continental invasion. Today, green crabs occupy almost every major estuary in the northern United States. And once they arrive, they rarely ever leave. To understand the scale of destruction, we need to dive beneath the surface to see what happens when green crabs move in. First, they attack the base of the food web. Green crabs feed voraciously on soft shell clams, mussels, oysters, and small invertebrates. Doing so, they wipe out native shellfish populations that have taken decades to grow. In Maine alone, green crabs have destroyed over 90% of soft shell clam beds in some areas. For local fishermen, that means livelihoods lost and traditions erased. But the damage doesn't stop there. By constantly digging and turning over the seabed in search of prey, the crabs uproot vital eelgrass meadows. The underwater forests that protect coastlines and serve as nurseries for fish, crabs, and even seabirds. Without eelgrass, the sediment becomes unstable. Coastal erosion increases. Juvenile fish lose their shelter. And entire food webs begin to unravel. Scientists have described the green crab as an ecosystem engineer, but one that builds nothing and destroys everything. Their presence triggers a domino effect. As native crabs, fish, and mollusks disappear, the balance of the ecosystem collapses. Predators lose food, algae blooms, the water becomes cloudy and lifeless. 
It's not just an ecological disaster. It's a slow motion collapse of a once rich coastal world. Every invasion leaves scars. In the case of the green crab, those scars can be measured in dollars, in jobs, and in ecosystems lost. According to recent studies from NOAA, USGS, and several U.S. universities, the annual economic loss caused by green crabs is estimated at up to $44 million. So where does that number come from? About 60% of the losses come directly from commercial shell fisheries. Green crabs devour clams, mussels, and oysters that would otherwise support local economies. Entire harvesting grounds have been wiped out, forcing closures and layoffs across New England. Another 25% comes from environmental restoration costs. Millions spent each year trying to replant eelgrass beds, rebuild habitats, and stabilize eroding coastlines. The remaining 15% is indirect, loss of tourism, reduced fish stocks, and the ripple effect on coastal communities that rely on healthy waters. In Washington state alone, emergency monitoring and trapping programs have cost more than $8 million over the past decade. And yet, scientists warn that these figures are conservative. The true cost, if populations continue to grow unchecked, could easily exceed $60 million per year within the next decade. The green crab has become a case study in how a single invasive species can reshape both nature and economy. But the story doesn't end in despair. Across America's coasts, people are fighting back. In Washington state, a program known as the Crab Team has mobilized hundreds of volunteers to monitor and trap green crabs before populations explode. Since its launch, over 400,000 crabs have been removed from sensitive estuaries, a small but significant victory. Local communities are also finding creative ways to turn the problem into opportunity. Some fishermen are experimenting with turning green crabs into new products, from seafood delicacies to organic fertilizer and animal feed. In Europe, the same species is served as stock for soups and sauces. If Americans can learn to harvest and market them, we might reduce their numbers while creating a new sustainable industry. At the same time, scientists are restoring eelgrass meadows, replanting the underwater ecosystems that green crabs destroy. In areas where eelgrass has been successfully restored, fish and shellfish populations begin to rebound within just a few years. Technology is also helping. Drones, environmental DNA sampling, and machine learning models are now being used to detect early signs of invasion before it's too late. But the greatest defense against green crabs isn't technology, it's awareness. Every fisherman, beachgoer, and coastal resident plays a part in early detection. Every crab trapped and reported matters because the invasion isn't unstoppable. It's a race between destruction and restoration.
between neglect and action. If we act together, we can protect our coasts, restore our habitats, and transform a $44 million loss into a story of resilience.